Welcome back to AP World Simplified. Today we'll be discussing the Neolithic Revolution. Now Neolithic actually means new stone, but we're not gonna be focusing on the stone portion. We're gonna be focusing on the agriculture and the new concept of herding. That's going to transform societies starting at roughly 8,000 BCE. Now what makes farming so revolutionary is the fact that human beings can stay in one location. No longer, like in the Paleolithic era, do they have to hunt uh, and gather for food moving from place to place. Now all this sedentary or stationary lifestyle is going to increase the amount of food they have available, it's going to reduce the actual variation in their diet. They're going to eat a lot more of the same food over and over, which turns out to be okay. And anytime you have a surplus of food or an increase in food, it's known as the Malthusian principle, you're also going to have a rise in population. Same is true of the opposite. If you were to lose food, you're going to lose population, also known as a famine or a drought. And that is exactly how populations across the world starting at roughly, like I said, around 8,000 BCE, are gonna to start to increase substantially, exponentially even, because you're gonna have a consistent surplus of food uh, that they're able to live off of and their populations will grow as a result. Now, along with this population growth, you're also gonna have several items that generally tend to come with these new stationary or sedentary lifestyles. It's known as the Neolithic package. Now, along with this Neolithic package, you're gonna have increased population, of course, with the surplus of food, but you're also going to have the domestication of animals. You're also going to have specialized labor. And lastly, you're gonna have manipulation of the environment. You're going to have things like canals, um, and you're also going to have deforestation, which we'll talk about here in a moment. Now, the farm consistently obviously is going to require water. So people are naturally going to start settling near bodies of water or running water in the form of rivers, particularly fertile river valleys that have lots of nutrients in the soil as well to enhance the agriculture. Now, this water is not going to be available beyond very far from the actual shoreline. And to actually extend the water further beyond and allow them to use more and more land, thus creating more food, thus creating more people, they're gonna use irrigation in the form of canals, wells, and maybe even damming of rivers to hold water in certain areas for longer periods of time to enhance their farms. Another way they're going to manipulate the environment is they're going to use deforestation. Now, when they're whether they're trying to replenish the land of nutrients, and nobody knows how to fertilize yet, by the way, they don't figure that out for several thousand years, or they're just looking for more land to use, one of the popular methods is gonna be known as deforestation, in that they're gonna be cutting down any sort of foliage or trees that are in the way, and then using that land to, of course, uh, produce food uh, for humans and their society. Aiding humans, of course, in all the labor-intense activities such as agriculture and clearing of forests and digging canals are going to be animals. Now, the domestication of animals across the world is going to also happen somewhat simultaneously. So, traditional herding animals and farm animals that we know like sheep, pigs, uh, cows, horses, etc., chickens, those are all animals that are roughly around this period going to be s starting to be domesticated. What I mean by that is humans came across certain animals that were friendlier or more familiar with humans and those humans took those animals and bred them, breeding more and more likable, friendlier, familiar animals that are also able to cooperate and benefit from humans while humans also benefit from them. Now conditions and treatment aside, this was a mutual benefit to both groups. The humans were able to live off of the things and the labor that the animals produced, and the animals were much safer from the turmoil of nature, be it predators, disease, whatever, and both populations were able to simultaneously grow with each other. And that is going to be a distinct change from before when, while we had the beginnings of domesticated animals like perhaps dogs and things like that, people were not systematically living off of groups of animals like they're going to here in the Neolithic Revolution. Now, unlike the permanent settlements in the Neolithic era, there's another group of people known as pastoralists. Now, these pastoralists are going to reside in roughly the grasslands or steppe regions of your Eurasia, and what they're going to do is they're going to master horse riding. And in mastering horse riding, that's going to enable them to herd and move groups of animals like sheep, cows, etc. And that's going to allow them to move these uh, groups systematically from area to area, getting water and food, and allowing them to live off of these animals, using their meat, their milk, and their hides, etc., uh, to vastly increase their population. Now, I, they were nomadic just like the hunters and gatherers of the Paleolithic era were. But the difference is, again, they are systematically living off of these animals and they are using them to enhance their population as well as their appeal for trade to these permanent settlements, which we'll talk about here in a moment. Now, these pastoralists are gonna have somewhat of an ambivalent reputation as they're gonna spread both good things and bad things. Good things in the form of spreading trade, 
They're going to spread culture, language, innovation, those sorts of things, as they're really the main bodies of, of, of groups of people moving from place to place, allowing these permanent settlements to share ideas and things. However, two major negative things that these pastoralists are going to spread, of course, are going to be the raiding and pillaging and killing that they use, uh, in some cases, against permanent settlements and other pastoralists. And also, even if not intended, some of the negative things they're going to spread are disease. As these pastoralists move from permanent settlement to permanent settlement, and with other pastoralists, spreading these good and negative things uh, that would help uh, enhance or potentially uh, be a detriment to society. Now, whether you're dealing with a permanent settlement or pastoralist, you're going to have a sh big shift in how people conduct themselves. And what I mean by that is, in the Paleolithic era, everybody had to focus on gathering or hunting food. Like, that was your primary objective for the day. Yes, you had to fix your tools and things like that, but the, the main source of labor, or the main focus of labor, would be to acquire food on a daily or future day basis. That is no longer gonna be required here in this Neolithic revolution. Now, why you might ask? Because once human beings start utilizing farming and herding to acquire a surplus of food, no longer does every person in society need to focus on acquiring food every day. Now, still most people are gonna to need to focus on it, but for the first time in human history, you're gonna have a portion of people that are essentially idle. They don't have to farm or herd all day. They can focus on other tasks, and they still need food to survive. So what they're gonna focus on doing is they're gonna focus on making things that they can trade for food. This is known as specialized labor. With this specialized labor is gonna come an explosion of new inventions. Now what we're gonna find here is when people are focusing on a certain task or skill all day, be it pottery, weaving, uh, metallurgy, or any sort of skill along those lines, they're going to learn to do those things better and better and better as they learn more about them. So you're gonna have better techniques for making things, you're gonna invent uh, new objects entirely, you're gonna learn how to utilize new metals, blend new metals, and what's gonna happen is we're gonna have an explosion of new creations and ideas that are gonna really start to transform society quite rapidly, at least far more rapidly than the 100 to 200,000 years previous during the Paleolithic Revolution. Now another issue that's going to arise during this Neolithic era is going to be the first time we can clearly see who has more and who has less. And that rough idea about some having more than others is going to be known as social disparity. Now, it's often unclear whether the social disparity is due to tyranny or competence. Either way, for the first time, people are gonna be able to look and see who has more and who has less. And that's gonna be a big change from the Paleolithic era. In the Paleolithic era, people were roughly egalitarian. While you did still have chieftains that had somewhat more authority than others, most people had about the same amount of stuff, and men and women had about an equal role in society. Once this Neolithic revolution begins, though, we're gonna see a big difference in how people engage with each other and what roles they play in society. Now, along with the positives and negatives that result from inequality, you're also gonna have a change in gender roles in these new Neolithic societies. Now, as I mentioned previously, in the Paleolithic era, men and women shared a roughly equal role in contributing to the uh, uh, prevalence of their societies, their tribes, or whatever. After the Neolithic Revolution, though, physical strength is gonna be a major, major factor in how well your society does, be it for agriculture and farming or for defense of these newly acquired goods you have um, and defending them from others, be it in your own settlement or from other settlements. That's going to drive males to the top of the most important positions in society. This is known as a patriarchal society. And as Neolithic societies begin to grow and develop, they required more and more sophisticated forms of organization. This became known as the state or a government. And as physical strength was the point of emphasis for the success of societies at the time, what we saw happen was a solidification of males at the top of these positions. And so the mold was set going forward as human societies continued to develop. And we'll talk more about this developing state or government in the next video. And don't forget, if you're interested in other tools that can help out AP students and teachers, feel free to check out my website at morganapteaching.com. Thanks for watching.